Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Sometimes doctors pick strange places to practice. For instance, there's that young doctor, Bruce Hummer, who has his office in the village of Storm Point. Storm Point, of course, is located way up in the Dexter Mountains, way out in the middle of nowhere. In many respects, the people of Storm Point are very superstitious and backward. They live isolated from the world except during the midsummer months when the ice and snow is melted enough to allow free travel. This fellow Bruce went to Storm Point right after he left medical school. It's been very difficult for him most of the time. He's had to, to battle the villagers. They think he's harming them more than helping them with his newfangled methods. After all, you don't go from sulfur and molasses to penicillin without some objection being raised. Now, Dr. Bruce is paying a brief visit to the town of Knotty Pine. In fact, he's just on his way over to see Bill and the rest of the fellows. Bill, Stumpy, Gray Wolf, and Henry are relaxing a bit at headquarters, and uh, I mean relaxing. Honestly, every time Stumpy gets in where it's warm, he falls asleep. Oh, he had not in long that time. Boy, he sure can <laughs> saw wood. Listen to it. I, I wonder if I should get him a bale of hay so he can feed his nightmare, huh? <laughs> well, let the old timer sleep, fellas. When you get his age, you'll sleep in the warm air, too. <laughs> well, I must say, I've never seen the rangers looking so comfortable. Bruce! Bruce Hummer! Bruce, how are you? It's been a long time since we've seen you. Hello, fellas. Sure good to see you. How are things up in Storm Point? Oh, okay, I guess. Are uh, you in town for long, Bruce? I'll be here for a couple of days, Gray Wolf. I've come to get medical supplies and equipment before the pass gets completely filled with snow. Oh, that could happen plenty soon now. Say, <laughs> looks like Stumpy's pretty busy there in the easy chair. <laughs> oh, he's got 10 or 12 cords of wood sawed by now, Bruce. He's been at it ever since he came in. <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, listen, fellas, I've got to run downtown and drop off my orders for supplies taken a day or so to get things together and packed. I'll be back in about an hour, okay? Your sure thing. Then we'll all go over to the house and have a real chin fest. Little does Bruce know that he left Storm Point at the wrong time. Let's take a quick trip up into the Dexter Mountains. Mayor, I think we ought to send for that young feller. They've discovered another case of sickness in the village. I know, John, and this is getting mighty serious. Why he had to go off at the wrong time is more than I'll ever know. Well, I don't know as though he could do much good for the sick. Him and his newfangled ways of treating sickness. Oscar's got a point there, Mayor. Trouble is, we don't know what this sickness is. Maybe that young doctor of ours could tell us that much. Then Miss J and the other women folk could cure it with their way of doing things. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the old way is the best way. Women folk could do better than Dr. Bruce does. Why, when I wrenched my back, he, he stuck me under some machine, turned a couple of buttons, and then turned the buttons again later on and told me I'd feel better. <laughs> you know how I got cured? Well, when I got home, the missus rubbed goose grease and turpentine in my back. That's what fixed me up. Well, I think we're getting off the subject, Oscar. We've got five cases of serious sickness here. What are we going to do about it? I suppose we ought to try to get a hold of Dr. Bruce. This might be some new disease. Well, it seems to me, John, that we've had nothing but new diseases since Dr. Bruce came here. And I think Miss Jane and the women folk would do just as well without him. I agree, Mayor. But just the same, I think I'd better go to the weather station and have them radio Naughty Pine. Yes, John, I suppose you'd better do that. Bruce should be through in half an hour. 
Then we can go home. I'm getting hungry. I guess I am too, pal. Ah, talk about supper make mouth water. Me too, Sonny. Oh, Stumpy, uh, Stumpy, did you finally wake up? How long did you say before Bruce comes back? Bruce? How'd you know he was here? I thought you were asleep, <laughs> and here you were pretending. You fellas were getting such a bang out of hearing me snore, I hated to wake up and disappoint you. <laughs> Stumpy, you old fox. Hey, Bill, the radio call light is flashing. Oh, thanks, Henry. I wonder who's calling. It must be one of the fire towers. Who else could it be? Well, maybe a ranger is hurt or sick. Weather station over. Hmm. Something about a weather station. Well, then it's not one of our boys. Uh, you'll call again. No point weather station calling Bill Jefferson. Come in, Bill. Over. Maybe somebody wants Bruce. Uh, we'll find out. A Bill calling Storm Point Weather Station. Bill Jefferson calling Storm Point Weather Station. Over. Thank the Lord we got you, Bill. Is Dr. Bruce in Naughty Pine? Over. Bruce left our office about 35 minutes ago. Over. Can you find him and tell him he's got to come here right away? Five cases of an unknown sickness have broken out here. Over. I'm sure we can find him all right. He's probably at the medical supply house. Tell the people in the village we'll get him up there as quick as possible. <laughs> wait in the car. I'll run in and tell Bruce the news. Oh, Henry, call the airport and reserve a helicopter for us. Okay, Bill. Oh, can I help you, Ranger? Yes. Uh, is Dr. Bruce Hummer here? Oh, he was here, Ranger, but he left about ten minutes ago. You know where he went? Yeah, he went either to the Main Street Apothecary or Hudson's Pharmacy. He's after a new drug that we don't stock, and both of those places have it shipped in special. I see. Uh, which one do you think he went to first? <laughs> I wouldn't know, sir. Dr. Hummer didn't say. You have the phone numbers handy? Yeah, it'll take just a minute to look them up. Okay, uh, will you call both pharmacies and ask if he's been there? Tell him to stay where he is, and we'll drive to both and catch him there. I'll be glad to, Ranger. <laughs> Street Apothecary's at 3rd and Main, isn't it, Bill? Yes, pal. Step on it, but watch the intersections. Hey, that car coming against us! Got a doctor sign on it! Uh, maybe that Bruce. He had that kind of car. Yeah, it is Bruce. I can tell from here. I'll try to throw the light on him. Maybe he'll stop. No, it did not work. He not know it for him. Henry, turn the car around and chase him. I'll stop the traffic with the spotlight. Okay. Sonny, you'll break the wheel off. Henry, catch Bruce in the next two blocks. We're halfway to the Copter Airport from here. Right. He sees us, Henry. He's pulling over. I'll get him, fellas. Were you trying to flash me down before, Bill? Yes, Bruce. It's an emergency. We got a radio call from Storm Point that five cases of a strange sickness have broken out there. Huh? They want you to come back right away. Oh, sounds like an epidemic. Oh, the trouble is, it'll take me a whole day to drive back, even if the roads are okay in the mountains. I've got a helicopter waiting for us, Bruce. Helicopter? Wonderful. Let's go. <laughs> Well, the fellows finally have Dr. Bruce on his way. But let's find out what's happening at Storm Point. The mayor is talking to Miss Jane. She's a kindly lady who spends most of her time caring for the sick in a thousand and one ways. For the unselfish service, she's loved by all of the villagers, adults and small fry alike. Well, how are things coming along, Miss Jane? Not too good, Mayor. My homemade remedies just don't seem to help this time. The Burgesses have two down in their family with this strange sickness. That makes seven now. 
Oh, I do wish Dr. Bruce would come back. He probably won't come. He's having too good a time in Naughty Pine. Besides, he probably won't be much help. Now, Mayor, I don't think Dr. Bruce went there for a good time at all. I know that most of the folks resent his new ideas. Why, he even scolded me several times for taking medicine into my hands, but... Yes, well... yes, I know. He's just as much as laughed the time Si spit a chicken in half and put it over his son's rattlesnake bite. But after all, Mia, he is a doctor. And didn't he come here to Storm Point to help us? Eh, maybe so. But when we need him, he isn't here. He went to get medical supplies. Not a pleasure trip. Don't worry so much, Mia. He'll get here as soon as he can. We'll be over Storm Point in a few minutes, Bruce. Ah, uh, good. I don't know if I'll be able to land, though. You won't be able to land? Well, why, Bill? Look down below. Hey, there's fog down there. Fog? Now, well, how do you suppose the fog got in the valley? That well, warm air must have been carried over the mountains and down into the valley. And the cold air above is like a blanket over it. But, but sure, you're not going to turn back now, Bill. Not if I can help it, Bruce. There's one possibility of getting through that soup. Perhaps the boys at the weather station can talk us in. You think you can talk us in, Neil? I want to try it, Bill. I've got enough wire and my mic to stand outside. Let me go out and find out if I can hear you. Okay, Neil. I won't start in until you say so. I'm going outside now. I won't be able to hear you on the receiver when I'm out. Any instructions you want to give me? You'll be able to hear the motors all right. But I'm turning on the landing lights too. If you can't see the landing lights over you, then we're fogged in solid. Okay, Bill. Stand by. Okay, Bill, I'm ready. I can hear you faintly. Here goes, fellas. I'm going in. Take it easy, sonny. Those rocks are pretty hard down there. Can't see your lights, Bill, but you're getting closer. Keep running your present course. Boy, I sure hope he's got his hearing aid tuned to the right beam, or we'll be buzzard bait for sure. You're much closer now, Bill. I still can't see your lights yet. Can you drop down some more? I hope so, Neil, because we're coming down anyway. Well, we haven't hit anything yet. You're okay. Drop down some more. And you'll be able to see the land right here on the street. All right, Neil. Here goes. Hey, Bill, I can see the street below us. Oh, that Neil can sure talk a straight beam. That was a terrific job. Thanks a lot. You better give me a sedative now, Doc. Now that it's over, I'm scared enough to have a nervous breakdown. And Bill, don't ever ask me to do that again. Now here come the villagers, Bruce. They seem pretty excited. All right, quiet. Quiet. Quiet, please. Quiet, please, everyone. Now, let's get control of ourselves. Mayor. Do you know who the sick people are? I got the list right here, Doctor. It's in the order that they took sick. I want to see these people right away. Who's first on the list, Mayor? Uh, the Cliff family. Mrs. and two children are sick. All right. The Cliff family first. Let's go. <laughs> Henry, you know where my office is, don't you? Oh, I sure do, Bruce. Uh, can I get something for you? Yes. In the back room are some quarantine signs. Bring as many signs as you can carry that have typhoid fever on them. Typhoid fever? That's what it is. Well, I must say we never had sicknesses like this until you came here, Doctor. Yes, you did, Mayor. Before I came here, people just died. Nobody knew why. 
Now we do. And we can stop it if we get it in time. Yeah, how do you expect to stop it? By the use of vaccine, Dr. Yeah, Mayor. Some more of that newfangled treatment, eh? Well, it may be newfangled to you, Mayor, but it saved the lives of countless thousands. And it'll save the lives of your villagers. Bill, will you have somebody go after vaccine? They've got plenty of naughty pine. Right away, Bruce. Uh, Stumpy, Grey Wolf, oh. you fellas take off in the copter and get what Bruce wants. And also pick up the medical supplies he ordered if they're ready. Oh, we get them and be back plenty quick. Tell Neil to be ready to talk us in again if this fog ain't gone. Miss Jane, you've been very helpful. I'd suggest you get some rest before you come down with this, too. I don't need a rest, Doctor. Ah, uh, but you do. Now, you oh, be sure... Oh, please don't send me away, Dr. Bruce. I can be more helpful to you now. Well, all right. Let's go to the next house. Bill, will you and Henry see that those quarantine signs get nailed to the doors? Right. Better give me the list so we can follow along. If you need help, Bruce, just holler. I will. And watch for signs of hysteria among the villagers. Everybody's got to keep calm in a situation like this. Or there's, there's no telling where it might end. Well, that family's all right now. Mayor, Miss Jane, you've got to get some sleep. I'll call you if any more cases break out. All right, Doctor. Now, you be sure and call me now. I'll be angry if you don't. I'll do that, Miss Jane. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Rangers. Good night, Miss Jane. Miss Jane. Well, there, my friends, goes an angel in disguise. For years, she's ministered to the sick in this town. Never once thought of compensation. Typhoid fever is awfully miserable stuff, isn't it, Bruce? Yes, Bill. Not only can it make you miserable, but it can kill. Ooh. I get the chills just thinking about those poor suffering patients of yours, Bruce. They'll be on the mend shortly, Henry. I got here just in time. Bruce, do you run into lots of resistance here with your modern methods of practicing? You're thinking about the mayor's remarks? Yeah. I thought so. Yes, Bill, the... People here are resistant to modern medicine. Part of it is from superstition, the rest from being shut off from the rest of the world two-thirds of the year. Miss Jane is my strongest supporter, and sometimes, well, even she reverts back to the primitive. I sensed that was about what was going on. Well, there's nothing we can do about it tonight. Hey, here comes Stumpy and Grey Wolf. Yeah, and the fog's lifted. Oh, they'll be able to land all right. Oh, wonderful. Now we're prepared for anything that comes. After the fellows get here, we'll put on the feed bag and, well, then get some sleep. That sounds like an excellent idea. All in favor, say aye. <laughs> <laughs> How's the Perkins baby look, Dr. Bruce? He is much improved today, Miss Jane. <laughs> Those youngsters don't sound like they're sick, Bruce. <laughs> well, if they are, they're the healthiest sick youngsters I've ever treated. <laughs> well, let's go on to the next house. Mrs. Clift can be up and around in two days, Miss Jane. Nothing strenuous, mind you. Just sitting around the house. That's wonderful news, Doctor. I'll keep an eye on her so she won't overdo. Bill, good news. I think the epidemic is over. We haven't had a new case in ten days. That's a real morale booster, Bruce. I guess now we can go back to Naughty Pine. Well, you're welcome to stay. Let's go back to the office and talk. Oh, we go pretty hard for several days now. Several? 
I'll have you know it's been ten whole days, sonny. Oh, I'm too beat to care whether it's ten or a thousand. I'll get the coffee pot humming in a few minutes, fellas. Sure nice to have your company. Well, we're glad to have been able to help, Bruce. Well, I'll say. It's been a real experience. You're going to get some more experience, I'm a-thinking. Oh, what you mean, Stumpy? Well, the way the mare's galloping up the walk, you'd think a grizzly bear was chasing him. Looks like more trouble to me. Uh, Dr. Bruce, it is three more cases of typhoid fever broken out. Let's go, fellas. <laughs> Bill, let's hustle off down the street. I don't want anyone to overhear what I'm saying. Okay, Bruce. Come along, Henry. Well, go ahead. I'll catch up. Well, what's on your mind, Bruce? Did you notice anything strange about these three cases, Bill? Mm -hmm. No, I can't say that I did, Bruce. However, I'm not a doctor. Here, uh, hold my bag a while, will you? I want to show you something on paper. Okay. Now, look here. Mm -hmm. I've drawn a rough map of the village. Yeah. Where I'm putting the X marks is where the ten cases of typhoid fever have broken out. Say, they're pretty well spread out, aren't they? I'd say they cover the whole town. That's just the point, Bill. You mean because they're spread out, this makes a different pattern than most epidemics? This is not an epidemic, Bill. Are you joking, Bruce? No, not in the least. I think somebody's carrying the fever wherever they go and contact people. Bruce, that's terrible. That means some one person is responsible. Exactly. Someone who's carrying the bacteria in their body and contaminating everything they touch. How can you be sure, Bruce? Bill, epidemics aren't sporadic like this. They start in a limited area and then spread out. These cases are already spotted all over the physical area of Storm Point. Mm, I see what you mean. How are we going to find out who it is? It's got to be very carefully done. But I think we can get all of you rangers to make a survey of the homes where the fever's broken out. Why do you suppose those rangers are going around and taking all the names of everybody who's been inside the sick homes, Mayor? Yeah, and I wish I knew, John. It's some more of that fool doctor's work. Maybe we ought to stop him. And I've been thinking about that, Oscar. Pretty soon I'm going to put my thoughts into action. And we'll clamp down on this fella. Well, let's add up the score, fellas. All right. Spread out the papers so we can look at the names. Okay. Now what? Our job, of course, is to see if we can find the same name on more than one piece of paper. Oh, I see Mayor's name on two pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. uh, here's John's on two. Oscar's on four of them. But there doesn't seem to be any of them on the whole lot. Bill... What are you thinking about? You aren't paying much attention. Bruce, what would a throat culture of the person who is carrying this disease show? Why, if we took the culture from the tonsils, it would show active typhoid fever bacteria. Mm -hmm. Can you see those bacteria through a microscope when they're placed on a slide? Yes, you can. We can do better than that. We can project upon a screen a picture of those bacteria magnified millions of times. You mean so that hundreds of people in an auditorium can see them? Yes, that's what I mean. That's wonderful. Let's get some cultures from the throats of these folks listed. Have the mayor call all the townspeople together tonight in the village hall at 7.30. We may have something to show them. Looks like everybody in town's here except the sick, Bill. Good. You got the projector all set up for these slides, Bruce? All set, Bill, whenever you're ready. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, folks. Quiet down. Bill's trying to talk. Probably all of you are wondering just why we asked you to come here tonight. That's right, Ranger. 
There's no need for alarm, but there are some things you should know, and this is the time for you to find out. Whether you know it or not, the village of Storm Point is in a very dangerous spot with a severe epidemic of typhoid fever waiting to break out among you at any time. Fortunately, through the efforts of this young doctor of yours, Dr. Bruce Hummer, that epidemic has been held in check. The doctor states that all the typhoid fever cases broken out so far in Storm Point have resulted from one person carrying this disease to many others, and yet not himself being affected. Now, this kind of thing is well known to medical science. Our job was to find out who was responsible. And today we found out. Now we want you to find out also. And we're going to do it by means of pictures. Pictures of the actual typhoid fever bacteria. First, as found in the throats of one of your townspeople now lying dreadfully ill. Then a picture of the same deadly bacteria as found in the throat of the one who was innocently carrying the same deadly germ. Now the first picture I want to show you is a laboratory culture of the typhoid fever. The next picture is of the culture taken from the throat of the carrier. This person is in this room now. Oh, the machine! Did you see that? I can tell by your reaction that you recognize both cultures as the same. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, who, who is the person, Bill? Yes. We have a right to know, even if it's me. That person has to be taken away. He's a menace to the whole village. Now, will right. you tell us who this person is? The person carrying typhoid fever bacteria is a wonderful friend to all of you. It's Miss Jane. Oh, oh Miss no. no. well, This is certainly a surprise to me. But I'll be glad to go to a hospital. No, 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 no we can't take her away. No, 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 listen, no, folks. No, no. Listen, uh, listen. Listen, everyone, listen, listen. Please, please don't feel I'll be harmed. I'm sure that Dr. Hummer and Ranger Bill know best. Well, Miss Jane, how do you like Naughty Pine Hospital? Oh, just fine, Bill. It's just like a vacation. I don't feel sick at all. It's hard to believe I make everybody else sick. Well, you won't anymore, Miss Jane. The lab tests are beginning to show negative. Now, that's wonderful news, Bruce. And Miss Jane, pretty soon you and Dr. Bruce can be back at your favorite job of helping others. Better than that, Bill. There's no more typhoid fever in Storm Point. And the town folks have come to realize what Dr. Bruce has done for them. Bill, how did you know Miss Jane was the carrier? Well, because she was the only one not mentioned on the lists, Bruce. Yet I knew she'd been in all the infected homes because of her kind ways of helping others. The thing was, nobody we talked to seemed to count her as a visitor. She was more like a member of the family or an old friend. And she was the obvious one because her name was conspicuous by its absence. And that's the greatest tribute Miss Jane could ever receive. Well, who would have guessed that Miss Jane was making everybody sick that came close to her? Thanks to Bill and his rangers, Miss Jane can go back to helping others without being dangerous to them. See you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill!